Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And uh, I just got done finished teaching my last workshop um, where we were talking a lot about the endocrine system and the nervous system. And uh, it was just kind of making me think about the importance of our nervine materia medica and taking care of our nervous systems. And you know, one thing that I've noticed in I would say more the, the, the supplement industry in the natural products industry, we've been really seeing this major focus on the adaptogen materia medica and kind of to the neglect of our nervines. And you know, of course, adaptogens are wonderful herbal medicines. They're incredibly healing. They're incredibly powerful and restorative. And, uh, but oftentimes they can sometimes be used out of context and uh, potentially in, in inappropriate situations where people would actually respond much better to uh, a nervous system remedy. And I was thinking about it and just how, just thinking about our culture, thinking about the world that we live in these days and how, you know, so many people are living in the cities and just living in the day to day hustle bustle, uh, you know, dealing with traffic and family and kids and work and deadlines and, you know, classes and being, being a student and just all of the stressors of our modern day life and how ultimately over a long-term period of time that can really be very depleting on our nervous system. And what I found is that a lot of times uh, we see that term adrenal burnout um, or exhausted adrenal glands kind of being used uh, very often and I think a lot of times out of context. And what really what I've noticed from my clinical experience is that oftentimes people reach a state of nervous system exhaustion before they reach a state of true, real deal endocrine burnout, right? And, and I say endocrine burnout, not just adrenal burnout, because all of our endocrine glands are very interconnected, very interwoven. It's kind of hard to just isolate one from the rest. And so to me, what I find clinically being really important is, is, is to kind of bring back our attention to our nervous system remedies, to our nervines. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed about our nervine materia medica is that it's really helpful to divide it into some more specific categories, right? So oftentimes we think of nervines as like plants that will kind of calm your nervous system down, make you chill out, make you uh, shift your autonomic nerve function from sympathetic fight, flight, freeze response to parasympathetic resting, digesting, and repairing response. And, um, one of the things that I think is, is important whenever we're studying herbal medicine and especially herbal actions is to break those herbal actions down into more specific categories. So we can take the huge, you know, 100 herb list of nervines and maybe break it down into smaller categories that are much more specific and show you um, give you a little bit more of an understanding of how that herb is going to work specifically. Um, so one of the ways that I tend to do that is looking at nerving sedatives or, or relaxants. These are our very gentle daily use nervines, things that we would use um, just throughout our day-to-day -day life to help kind of calm the nerve tone down. Second, we have our nervine hypnotics. These would be our much stronger nervous system remedies, uh, those that, as the name implies, um, basically induce a, a, a certain degree of adjusted consciousness, right? They're going to make you feel very calm, very sedated, uh, to the point of feeling kind of sleepy and maybe a little ditzy, a little cloudy, a little uh, tired, right? Because um, they're, they're so sedating to the system. But the last category is what is, in my opinion, the most important category of nervines, and that's our nervine trophy restoratives. And nervine trophy restoratives are a very particular category of herbal medicines that they don't necessarily all just make you feel really sleepy and tired, nor do they all just make you feel kind of gently relaxed and, and calm, but they actually 
strengthen, uh, strengthen and nourish and replenish a worn out nervous system. And what I find is that oftentimes people reach, as I said, that state of nervous system burnout far before they reach a true endocrine system burnout. And when we apply a lot of adaptogen remedies to people with nervous system burnout, we can actually make it worse through overstimulating them. So really our nervine trophor restoratives are a much more indicated action uh, for a lot of our modern day uh, clients. And um, what I find with the trophor restoratives is that um, well, really what the old doctors called this is they, they called it neurasthenia. And that was a term used by the eclectics and the physiomedicalists, which is our, our North American uh, herbal tradition, late 1800s, early 1900s. And um, they said that the, the neurasthenic person tends to be kind of thin, tend to be dry, they tend to be tense, uh, they tend to be cold. And all of this essentially matches what in Ayurveda they call the vata dosha, right? The vata dosha uh, has all those qualities, right? Thin, cold, dry, tense, nervous, anxious. And, um, and what we can see is when people get to that state of nervous system burnout, um, that they tend to feel fatigued, they tend to feel tired, they tend to have difficulty sleeping, uh, their energy levels are kind of wavering, they get really high energy and then really low energy. Um, we see a, an increased sensitivity, so sometimes sounds or, or touch and feelings can be uh, kind of heightened and overly, overly stimulating. Uh, kind of this increased sensitivity to the environment. Uh, we can see difficulty sleeping, um, irritability, tension, spasm, cramping. Um, these are all kind of qualities that we'll see with nervous system exhaustion. So our trophy restoratives are our key remedies for that state. So I wanted to talk about, uh, just mention a couple remedies here that I have used personally a lot uh, in my clinical practice and just seen incredible results, even just six weeks on a nerve trophy restorative kind of protocol um, can really shape shift your whole reality, really. Because, I mean, when we're talking about the nervous system, we're talking about your state of mind, right? We're talking about your psychology. We're talking about how you feel in your daily life. And if that's burned out, if it's exhausted, uh, as, or as the old doctors would call it, if it's asthenic, right, or atrophied, um, then you're not going to feel so good, right? So I, I love these herbs because you really notice the effect and they just overall are incredibly healing um, in a somewhat gentle, subtle, yet powerful way. So our top two herbs used in traditional Western herbalism as nerving trophy restoratives, hands down, best ever, is milky oat seed or Avena sativa and skull cap, which is uh, Scutellaria lateriflora. And um, specifically here though, I'm referring to the fresh tincture of both of these remedies. Uh, this is really, really important. Uh, when we're talking about Avena sativa, the milky oat seed, that uh, you really want that fresh seed and there's a, a particular stage when you squeeze the seed and it'll exude this white latex uh, that has a very sweet taste to it uh, and that latex is primarily alcohol soluble. So you really need to make a tincture of the fresh milky oat seed in order to extract that latex, which has a very strong uh, trophy restorative action on the nervous system. Now, of course, uh, dried milky oat seed, if you make very strong decoctions, there's a ton of minerals in there, silica, and all sorts of nutritive qualities there that you know have a very broad range of therapeutic benefit as well as nutritional benefit. But when we're talking about the trophy restorative action, we really want that tincture of fresh milky oat seed. And then with the skull cap, I find skull cap is kind of this interesting um, polarity in that remedy. <clears throat> 
in the sense that the 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 fresh tincture of skullcap, the leaf, uh, I find is very uh, tr restorative for the nervous system, but it's not distinctly hypnotic. And I know that might be surprising because skullcap is usually um, you know found in our Materia Medica listings <clears throat> under the stronger uh, nervine hypnotics, kind of right alongside with hops and passion flower and valerian and things like that. Um, but what I found is that the hypnotic properties of skullcap are best extracted through an infusion uh, using uh, water that's below boiling temperature. So there's something about pouring boiling water over the skullcap that uh, deactivates it in some way um, that makes it not quite so hypnotic. So I tend to recommend for the hypnotic effects of skullcap to use um, a warm infusion um, or to use the powder of the herb. But for the trophy restorative action, we really want that tincture of fresh skullcap leaf. It is amazing. That is a classic pair used in Western herbalism for a very, very long time. And it's incredibly powerful at rebuilding and strengthening the nervous system. My third favorite herb in this category would be Hypericum perforatum or St. John's wort. Uh, this is a wonderful nervous system trophy restorative. It has a very mildly relaxant effect, but what I find with St. John's wort is actually more uplifting. Uh, it's a, a way I would refer to it to use Chinese terminology. It's like a Shen tonic, right? And in Chinese medicine, they say the Shen is stored in the heart. And St. John's wort from uh, our medical astrology tradition is ruled by the sun and the sun rules the heart. And so I find St. John's wort brings this kind of strength and upliftment to the heart, to the spirit and kind of percolates through the nervous system and it kind of gently calms things down but helps to rebuild and strengthen the nervous system. It's one of our main remedies for nerve pain. Um, it's, it can't really be beat <laughs> in regards to, uh, to nerve pain and it's just a wonderful remedy uh, in combination with the skull cap and the milky oats and so that tends to be my lead triplet for restoring the nervous system and what I like about that triplet is that we have it's a constitutionally balanced simple small formula so we have milky oats is temperature neutral right meaning it's not hot and it's not cold and it's more on the moistening side Skullcap is cooling and bitter, and the St. John's wort is kind of aromatic, resinous, and warming. So we've got a warming herb, we've got a cooling herb, and we've got a neutral herb that's moistening. So it's a really nice lead triplet to begin any sort of um, formula or protocol to help restore the nervous system. So I've got four other remedies that I really like, and these are more uh, remedies that kind of tread that boundary between the nervine relaxant and the trophil restorative action. And these are uh, gently calming uh, herbal medicines that you can use throughout the day that don't make you feel sleepy or tired. But I also find that over the long term, they just tend to improve the, uh, the function of the nervous system, kind of the resilience of the nervous system, right? Where uh, little things aren't quite as prone to get to you uh, as much as before. Uh, you tend to feel a little bit more on an even keel uh, with these herbs. And I do find that they have a strengthening effect uh, on the nerve tone. So those four herbs would be uh, lavender, lavandula and gustifolia, uh, lemon balm or Melissa officinalis. Um, <clears throat> I love Damiana here, Ternera diffusa, and Tulsi or holy basil, Osimum sanctum. And what's really cool about those four herbs, uh, especially when you use them with the hypericum, the scutellaria, and the avena, is that these are all very aromatic, volatile herbs. And so what we see is, is that the, the, the essential oil content <clears throat> in these plants have a very strong affinity for the nervous system and what I find it's almost like these herbs drive the other three deeper into the nervous system. Um, we find skullcap and milky oats and hypericum they tend to be a little bit uh, energetically 
heavier, right? They're not quite as volatile and aromatic. Now they're kind of a little bit more fixed. Whereas these other four remedies are more volatile and they're gonna kind of disperse the herbs up and out uh, throughout the nervous system. What I like about those four herbs is that they also have different affinities for the different areas of um, strong kind of conglomerations of neural tissue. So primarily head, heart, and gut. So what we see is that the, um, the, uh, the lavandula and the melissa have a really strong affinity for digestion, right? Really great digestive agents, as well as the tulsi. Uh, they're nice uh, bitters and carminatives that help with digestion. And, you know, when the parasympathetic nervous system is activated, digestion is enhanced. But when you're in the fight or flight sympathetic response, digestion is shut down. So people with chronic uh, nervous system kind of complaints tend to have digestive issues as well well because their parasympathetic nervous system uh, isn't getting turned on because they're stressed out all the time. So having those digestive qualities present in those plants is very, very nice. We see the Melissa and the Ternera are really great cardiac remedies, right? Really nice for calming. Uh, people get anxious and their heart kind of flutters or their, their heart rate increases. It's really nice for calming that nervous excitability and the heart down. And then we find the mind, right? The Tulsi, the lavender, very calming for an overactive mind. For those people that when they get really stressed out, their mind kind of races and spins out of control and kind of spirals all over the place and they're just kind of freaking out and ungrounded right um, really nice remedies there um, to help to restore the nervous system so anyways I just wanted to share a little bit it's been on my mind lately thinking about the nervous system and I wanted to share with you a little formula uh, I'll post that formula underneath the video here so you can check that out. Maybe you can work with that formula yourself, with your clients, with your family and friends. And again, I just, I find this to be such an overlooked category in herbal medicine and oftentimes in favor for the adaptogens. And so I encourage you to maybe try working with this, these kinds of herbs first. Work with these Nervine Trophor restoratives um, before giving adaptogens or giving them with the adaptogens. That's typically how I, uh, if I am going to give an adaptogen, I usually give uh, these Nervine relaxants and Trophor restoratives alongside with them and they work better that way. So uh, I hope this serves you well. I hope you enjoy enjoyed that, please post a question and a comment below. If you're watching this anywhere but the blog, head on over to evolutionaryherbalism.com. I've got lots of free training on there, and um, I look forward to reading your questions and your comments. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and until next time, take care and be well.